Okay, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is your host TKK here and we are doing a moveset overview video. And this is on Tyranitar, it's a Pokemon that's been requested to me by a couple of people. So I figured we'd, you know, go into it, you know, talk about the moveset, talk about the Pokemon, see what its strengths are and where it can go. Before we get started, you know, I'm going to say my typical stuff. If you uh, do enjoy this type of video and you found it useful, please leave a like. I would really appreciate it. Uh, that really means a lot to me. Uh, if you are uh, new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We are pumping out one to two videos per day. Um, so if you like this type of content, moveset overview videos, Pokemon Showdown Lives, tournament replays, and BDSPOU, SS lower tiers, discussion videos, all types of things, uh, please consider subscribing. We're very close to 200 subscribers. And uh, if you have any sort of questions, concerns, feedback, put that in the comments section. I read all the comments and I pretty much answer every single one as well. So uh, I think we'll leave it at that in terms of the minute introduction. Let's jump into Tyranitar, which has been a staple in Pokemon in the OU tier ever since Gen 2. It's, uh, as you can see just from the stat distribution, it is insanely good. 100 HP, 134 attack, 110 defense, 95 special attack, which is still pretty respectable and usable. Uh, speed def of 161 speed. Speed is the only stat that you could say is somewhat middling, but considering how good the bulk is, it is, uh, not that big of an issue. It, it really is such a strong Pokemon. And, uh, rock dark typing is decent. Rock, uh, you get, you get the immunity to Psychic, which is nice. Uh, you have the resistance to fire, resistance to flying. Uh, so it's not too bad. You are weak to U-turn, you are weak to close combat, earthquake, things like that. So it is a mixed bag in terms of defensive prowess, but uh, it, it is still quite good considering how uh, potent Tyranitar is as a offensive and defensive threat. So uh, let's just talk about the ability. So ability is Sandstream. Sandstream, you know, summons a Sandstorm and BDSPOU, it's going to summon sandstorm for five turns unless you're using uh smooth, smooth rock or whatever um but sandstorm is really good because one of first of all uh it chips down every pokemon that's not a rock steel or ground type so it can negate leftovers on you know on a word clef it can start to chip down stuff like latios gengar all these pokemon that you know don't even run leftovers generally so they get chips six per six point two five percent per turn which is really useful and the most important part about this sandstream and sandstorm in general is the interaction it has with the rock type so rock type pokemon actually get a 50 percent boost to their special defense when they're in a sandstorm which is a really weird interaction it's like such a odd oddly specific interaction but it works out so well for Tyranitar, as you can see, that 100 speed def becomes so much stronger, or so much, so much more bulkier in the Sandstorm that it summons for itself. Meaning that this Pokemon is a fantastic special wall and special tank, right? Because even uninvested, it's hitting 304 attack, meaning that it hits extremely hard. So the first step we first set we have here is like a tank type of set. We are running leftovers just to have the passive recovery over the course of the game. Because considering Tyranitar doesn't have any recovery of its own, Tyran you know, leftovers is the best it's gonna get. Um, this is gonna be your rocker, your tank, your special wall, special tank. Um, so this can come in on Gengar, bar focus blast, of course. Latios is a huge one. It can come in on Latios very, very easily. Uh, set up Stealth Rock, scare it out with a potential for a dark type move. You don't even have one. You don't need to have one to scare it out because they're gonna be scared of it. Um, but get up rocks, you know, cripple things with, with T-Wave. So yeah, Stealth Rock is kind of like the purpose of this set rock slide is just good stab you could go for stone edge but rock slide is just a little bit more consistent um if you feel like you're missing out on some ko's feel free to use stone edge but the inconsistency of stone edge and the low pp uh, makes me think rock slide is just superior t wave here as uh the third move uh t wave is a good option just to cripple switch ins to you tyranitar things like scissor wanting to come in um things like uh maybe a clef trying to come in you, just a good cripple just a good status move to have it just slows down faster threats um and just gives tyranitar a lot of utility uh in the last slot so there's a couple things here you can go for crunch um if you want stab uh spelled that wrong spelled it wrong again there we go uh crunch you can also i initially had earthquake on earthquake is just gives you the nice uh coverage of rock slide you know or edgequake the standard basically you can hit steel types super effectively which is definitely useful um the other option that comes to mind and it might seem a little weird is ice beam ice beam is a really solid move even with only 203 attack ice beam is going to do a lot of damage to gliscor which is going to be a very popular uh, pokemon that tyranitar is going to face in bd DSP OU. 
as you can see here, even a zero minus special attack ice beam is going to do 55 to 65 to Gliscor, which can be really, really valuable. And obviously this is like a max, max Gliscor. It could be most of the time they're not running this much spadef, so it's going to be doing more damage. Uh, and that can be one of the biggest benefits to running ice beam. So definitely consider that as, as an option on your Tyranitar. It has the potential. It has such a great move pool that it can uh, kind of, it can pull off these type of sets. You know, even has access uh to flamethrower which means you can snipe a scissor although scissor is going to be have a much easier time breaking past uh tyranitar so you don't want to typically stay in on uh, scissor so that's why ice beam is better because uh gliscor generally can't uh hurt tyranitar as much or as easily as uh, scissor can uh, considering it's just a little bit weaker altogether so that's why i like ice beam as the option here you can also again eq crunch whatever you want but these are all pretty solid options as just a good special pivot um good special tank it's going to be able to switch in on your latios your heatran uh scare them out put up rocks and just set up sand just kind of be a general annoyance for your opponent and be a good special uh tank to just kind of fall back on on your on your balance builds so that is uh that is the first build here and we can roll into the second one which is a choice band set so obviously tyranitar has spectac spectacular uh defenses as we saw here max uh hp i forgot to mention max hp max spadef uh just to maximize um you know your bulk here with the sand stream you're going to be a very very specially tanky mon but as we already said you know it has 134 attack why don't we use that as well and what better item to uh give tyranitar than a choice band choice band uh makes this thing insanely strong it is hitting i think uh nearly 600 attack or just above 600 attack which is uh, insane when you think about it like that is uh insane it's just super powerful and it has the option to run really really powerful stab moves the most important one being stone edge right stone edge 100 base power um off a choice band adamant tyranitar is hitting things extremely hard extremely extremely hard this is going to be your most hardest hitting move it is going to be extremely useful for you um if you want to just get the most damage output possible crunch is also a really great option on the stab spectrum it's a little bit weaker than stone edge but it is you know 100 accurate which is nice and also has this nice 20 percent chance to uh lower defense which can be really beneficial uh so crunching into scissor is going to do give, give it a uh, do a good amount of damage stone edge into scissor stone edge into clef you can imagine tyranitar can serve as a very very potent breaker uh as uh for for your team right the last two slots they're a little bit more open-ended uh poke you to be frank you don't really want to be clicking anything besides stone edge and crunch so your other option uh, i have here is ice fang ice fang is a good option to you know catch a uh gliscor uh, catch a Garchomp, catch a, um, I guess those are the only two that really come to mind. I guess Flygon would be the other one. Salamence, Dragonite was the other one I'm trying to think of. Yeah, Dragonite. So catching those can definitely be useful. Um, doing a little bit more damage to ground types as well uh, that are going to resist your Stone Edge. So that, that could work as well. But most of the time, you're just going to be clicking the first two moves. The last one is Fire Fang. Fire Fang uh, just helps you net damage against Scizor. Uh, you could also opt for EQ. I honestly would not be opposed to running EQ. I think it is a really strong move. Uh, the point is that Fire Fang... Obviously, is going to do a lot of damage to Scizor, but Stone Edge does <laughs> not just as much, but it does a very good chunk. So you don't really need that. And Fire Fang is very niche, and being locked into that can't be the isn't the most beneficial. So EQ could work just to have something to hit uh, ground or hit uh, Steel types a little harder. Um, that might resist uh, that might resist Stone Edge. So that's an option as well. You could also you know use this as a Stealth Rocker. Um, Tyranitar does force so many switches that it's easy to just uh, early game. Put up stealth rocks as your opponent switches out when they're not willing to risk um you know like their lottie or something like that because the fact of the matter is even without any investment 341 spadef or sorry 341 hp plus 237 times 1.5 which equates to let me calculate 355 spadef is absurd that means you can come in on latios obviously you're not going to take it as well as the spadef version but you can come in on that scare it out put up rocks switch back out uh come in later and then start firing off banded crunches banded stone edges um and it can be really really powerful so up to you in terms of what you want those are just a couple of options that are at your disposal and the last slot so this is a slot um or this is a move set that's been used in the past before it was definitely better when pursuit was still in the game but 
hey, we don't have that anymore. We don't have the luxury of Pursuit Tyranitar anymore, but it's still a decent revenge killer. Uh, Jolly Nature plus 252 speed means you're outspeeding base 110s after your Choice Scarf, uh, but you don't outspeed much else after that. So you're still going to be slower than Alakazam. I believe you should be slower than uh, Weavile uh, for sure. Yeah. So sorry, you were uh, yeah. So you're you're outsped by uh, Weavile and Alakazam, but you do outspeed uh, Gengar and Latios, so you can catch those and you know kill them with a Crunch for sure. Because even without an Adamant Nature, Crunch off of a 367 uh, attack stat is insane. So Choice Scarf is the option here. Stone Edge Crunch uh, as stab options. Ice Fang is still good to hit uh, bulky grounds. Dragonite Garchomp, uh, Garchomp Shield, you'll be able to outspeed now, so you can maybe catch that at like 60, 70 percent. Um, depending on its set and Gliscor. And the last slot is again Stealth Rock. You do force a lot of switches with Tyranitar, so it's easy to get up Stealth Rock's early game and then switch out and then come in and uh, continue to wreak havoc as a Scarf, uh, Scarfer at the same time. So you can kind of roll compress, put rocks on your Scarfer. It does work. You have to play smart with it. You don't want to do that in the late game. Uh, it's probably better to set those up in the early game uh, when people are going to play a little bit more safe and they don't know what set you are exactly yet. So um i think that's really all there is to say in terms of tyranitar i hope you guys enjoyed this one i do enjoy making these moveset overview videos and i'm very excited to upload a uh pokemon showdown live with when we do a little uh spotlight on tyranitar but that won't be for a while just because i uh, am on call for work and i can't record live videos uh very easily right now on the ladder because of my my work schedule but that will be out later this week i i can promise you guys that later probably thursday uh or friday but if that is something you're interested in, feel free to subscribe. If you did like this, leave a, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, I think I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Take care and have a fantastic day.